Hi, this is Bruce Hart of the Hart Foundation. Hi, this is David Worth, Director of Photography on Bloodsport and Director of Kickboxer. Hi, my name is Frank Duke. Some of you might recognize my name from the movie Bloodsport. John claude Van Damme portrays me in the movie. Hello, everyone. This is Uri Reyes Sr., the star in Surf Ninjas, and I played the character as Atch. This is Mohamed Kisi, alias Don in the movie Kickboxer with John claude Van Damme. This is Paul Herzog, composer of the music from Bloodsport and Kickboxer. Hi, this is Tony Luke Jr., a.k.a. Joey the Nail Nardone. This is Mike Riccioni, producer of Bloodsport 2. Hi, I'm John the Dragon Wilson, also known as Jake Ray from Bloodfist. Hello, this is Haskell Von Anderson III. I was Winston Taylor in the movie Kickboxer. You're listening to Justin Ray Harvey. Justin Ray Harvey's life is a different culture. It's a different world. You better come to terms with that, or you won't last a heart, a heart, a heart, a heart. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Justin Harvey Show. We have a very, very special edition um, today because I bet my audience is wondering how in the world did I get into the DJing business and to know what to do and how to do it. Well, today is a very special day. I have brought my idol in the radio business, Mr. Brian Resner, to the show. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you, Justin. Um, you, you you build me up too high. You, you really do. Well, I guess some things never change, do they? So That's right. How have you been, man? I, I've, I've been pretty good, you know, hanging, hanging out here on YouTube and, you know, doing my radio show and... Actually, Brian, I've had quite a few stars on my show. I've been listening, Justin. Wow, you you really really have. I, I was re- I really liked the Bruce Hart interview. Wow, so that's your so out of all my interviews, that's your favorite, right? That one definitely is my favorite because Bruce Hart is definitely important to me. So it was uh, it was a great interview. A lot of your stuff I've, I've listened to and, and really enjoyed. Oh. oh. Oh yeah, definitely, Brian. I mean, compared compared to when I first started in the um, radio business, I don't think you'll disagree. But I've improved majorly. Oh wow, yeah, C- completely, completely. So and, and with with me, Brian, like there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of people that have podcasts and have major stars and all this. Yes, but. The difference is they have managers. You know, they have the financial backing to pay someone and say, hey, get me this person and get me that person. What I'm doing is I'm seeking these people out and getting them on my show. That's yeah, they got they got an entire team behind them. You, you're you just doing it solo. Yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, but uh, Brian, I will go ahead and give you the floor if you could – um, if you could remember back to like 2004 and actually, you know, um, talk about, you know, how you ended up um, meeting me and how it was when I was first at the radio station. Well, the first time that I actually talked to Justin Harvey was on the phone. And if you remember correctly, before we met, I probably talked to you I, as soon as I got to the radio station the phones would be lighting up, and there's Justin, and he wants to talk about something. He's got an opinion about something. It could be something completely different from the day before, but he's definitely got something to say. So I could tell the kid had um, a lot of a lot of heart for the business. Nevertheless, I talked to Justin probably four or five times a shift every day for about a year. Would you say, Justin? Oh. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. About a year, and then we set up the first Justin Harvey guest DJ experience, and and it was it was a real fun show, was it not? Oh, oh yeah, I, I still actually, I have that, actually. I would love to get a copy of that show. That That's great that you still have it. But, uh, yeah, and, and from there, it just blossomed into all kinds of little guest things. I think that you were a, a judge on... 
just about everything that I did, and uh, I, I brought you I brought you in on on everything that that possibly was right up your alley. So uh, that's that's where it blossomed from. Uh, oh, oh yeah, and I I still have the I still have the old Brian Reznor liners that I recorded for you when I was in in studio. Wow, that's awesome! I would I would love to uh, check those out too. So, so what what I might do, Ryan, is I might just you know drop drop those in into this into this interview, so people will know you know what I'm talking about. Oh well, you go right ahead, my man. No, I haven't heard that stuff in ten years. Yeah, how is that stuff made? Can you kind of take my audience through that process, possibly? Of how stuff, how what stuff is made? Uh, you, your, um, you know, your, uh, your liners were made at the radio station. Oh, the drops? Yeah. Oh, that's just, uh, just basic mixing. I always use, uh, Cool Edit, um, Adobe Audition, and, uh, I just, just cut and splice whatever, whatever it is I wanted to use at the time, whether it be a song, uh, a song line or, or a movie reference or, you know, wh- whatever it was. I would just splice it in with my generic Brian Reznor voicer, and, and it's, it's actually pretty simple. I, I could actually uh, probably show you in about about thirty seconds. Oh 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 well, yeah, because because that was the type of liner that I'm actually looking for for this for this show. You know that aspect. Cause I think. Well, I tell you what, awesome. Justin, what we'll do is. Uh, We'll make a day of it sometime in the uh, sometime in the future. I'd say near the end of March, we could uh, set up a time for me and you to get together, and uh, I will gladly show you how to use the program and show you how to mix and master your own, and then then the history will be made in the voicer world. Oh, absolutely, Brian, and uh, you know you you've done you've done a lot in in the uh, radio business, but. Uh, let my audience know what you're doing now because I know I know after you had helped me, you had ended up um, leaving the radio station and pursuing other things. I actually left the radio station when I was 21, and then decided to go into in, into my own field of trying to uh, produce shows, make things happen, bring bring entertainment to Beckley, and basically change change the the scene in southern west virginia uh that was pretty much my goal and i don't know if i've accomplished it or not but i've i've damn sure tried well i i read your post all the time and you know um you are great my friend because you know one thing that i like about brian is like you always tell the truth brian you're not like one of these people that you know, sugarcoats anything. If you see something like, I'll give you an example. If you see somebody complaining on Facebook, um, you call them out on it, you know? Right. And be like, you know, stop complaining. You know, because a lot of these people, in, in my opinion, Brian, a lot of these people that, you know, write these statuses on Facebook, if they were to face my disability for one week, they would not be able to spend themselves. Well, that that's you are a perfect example, and and I could I could use you as an example for a hundred thousand people that complain every single day that if Justin Harvey can get up every day and live his life with a smile on his face and a positive attitude, then anybody can, and. People don't realize how hard your day-to-day life is. The things that you do every single day just to have a normal day is immensely higher than anyone else that's on Facebook complaining about, you know, they had to stay late at work or their boyfriend doesn't love them or whatever they're talking about. They don't even understand what a true struggle is. And yet you have always got a smile on your face. You have always got something positive to say, and you're always in the mind frame to truly inspire people like you and people that are not like you. And that and that that's a that's a pretty high realm, Justin. And, and I, I definitely tip my hat to you for that. 
Thanks, Brian. So, um, like it, it's twenty, it's twenty fourteen, my friend. What, uh, what is your expectations for this year, for Brian? This, this year is going to be a good year. We've got a lot of big names coming to the area. I'm, I'm in, in talks with a lot of different people to, uh, to bring a lot of big concerts here. And, um, you know, we've got the rehab concert coming up on uh, March 26th. That'll be at Munchies in, uh, in Beckley. That's 2825 Harper Road. And, um, the and rehab is actually on their farewell tour. This is their last tour that they're ever going to do. And, uh, that tour is stopping it in Beckley. And that's a big deal for a lot of people who've, who've listened to rehab over the years, whether it be, um, it don't matter. That was a huge song. And uh, then, then of course, sitting in a bar. I mean, that song. That song was so big that it was released. It was released, and then it, it got some popularity. Then it was re-released two years later to become a number one song, which is unheard of. That doesn't happen. That that's not something that happens every single day that a song get re-released two years later and do better than it did the first time it was released. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have uh, they have managed to capture audiences of all types, whether it be hip hop, even country, rock. A lot of different people like rehab. And Wednesday, March twenty sixth, will be the last time really that anyone in this area will ever see rehab because after this tour, they are finished. Oh wow, that means complete, folks. So you you don't you don't want to miss this at all, or you'll regret it. So. Also, Brian, I want I wanted I wanted to save this, uh, you know, closer to the end of the interview because it, it's always been um, one of my favorite things in the world that you have that you have um, done for me, and because I've not told my audience this, but um, you actually um, you actually helped me meet um, my favorite wrestling superstar X Pac, and. Um, um, you know, one one thing I wanted to say about this story, and you can you can kind of you know fill my audience in about this. Um, I came I came to a nightclub to meet to meet X Pac, and they told me a certain time, and I had got there on that time, and X Pac wasn't there, and I'm like, I'm thinking, you know, <clears throat> you know what the hell, you know, because it's not easy for me to travel. You know, and and Brian sees me hit the door, and um, and I told Brian, you know, to look, I'm here to see, here to see X Pac, and uh, and Brian knows it's not easy for me to get out, and he says, I'll be back in a couple minutes. Well, uh, X Pac came through the door. Kind of talk about that, Brian. Well, um, basically, we had gotten you, – you're talking about when you came through the door and he wasn't there and I wasn't there, and you were looking for the both of us. Then I get a phone call, hey, there's a kid down here in a wheelchair who says you're supposed to meet him. And I said, oh, no, Justin's already over there. So I run across the parking lot, and I get over there, and, um, of course, Justin's there to see X-Pac. So I go and find X-Pac and I drag him away from the television – and tell him that he has a very special fan that wants to meet him. X Pac, of course, embraces Justin, you know, like anyone would, because you know the, the the just the straight sunshine that comes out of Justin Harvey, you know, everyone should be excited to meet him. But nevertheless, that, that was a great night. You had a lot of fun with X Pac, didn't you not? Oh, oh, oh yeah, I, absolutely, Brian. And you know, in this excitement that I had. You know, I had completely forgot to get a camera, so he actually um, tells my brother, you know, can you get a camera so I can get a picture with this kid? And, you know, not a lot of celebrities will do that. So. He spent a little bit of time with you, didn't he? He was, he was there for a good 35, 40 minutes, wasn't he? Oh, oh, oh yeah. And then um, and then after after the big wrestling event, um. They they all pretty much hung out with me. Yeah, you got to meet Rick Steiner, the Barbarian, Disco Inferno, David Flair, Ron the Truth Killings, who is now our Truth on the WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, 
a lot, a lot of different stars that day, huh? Oh, oh, yeah, and it's 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 all thanks to you, brother. And you know, one of these days, I'm going to repay you back in a huge way, Brian. You, just you owe way. me nothing. You owe me nothing, Mister Harvey. I appreciate you being, uh, you know, being a part of some of these good things that we've done. Uh, oh, I, I, absolutely, Brian. And I wanted, I wanted to ask you too. Um, and we, we can, you know, later on we can discuss the details off air. But you know how you like to try to bring, um, that you like to try to bring, um, you know, musicians and and rockers and stuff. Yeah. Well. How about we try to bring in um, some actors from, like, the 80s, like uh, Michelle Kesey, Tom Poe from Kickboxer, and, and different ones like that. Would you be interested in... Um, I, I'm interested in anything that has a market. If we could prove that uh, if we could prove that there's a lot of people that want to come and meet those guys, and of course I would bring them. I will bring anybody that anybody wants to see. I mean, I've, I've done all kinds of concerts... I've done. I, do you remember Soul for Real? Um, yep. Mm-hmm. Soul for Real. They had two songs in 1992. I brought them back, and we had we had 400 some people excited as could be to see Soul for Real do their thing as adults. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually, uh, I brought Kibo Cyrus. Do you know who Kibo Cyrus is? Sounds familiar. Sounds well, familiar. Uh, the reason why it sounds familiar is because he is the uncle to Miley Cyrus. He is the brother to Billy Ray Cyrus. And uh, we brought him in and took him down the river. Now, no one had ever heard of Kibo Cyrus, and no one had ever heard his song, but we brought him anyway because we thought it'd be fun, and it turned out that it was fun. A lot of people came and seen him. We took him to the Lost Parent that weekend. We were uh, we were at uh, Big Willie's that weekend. We were at uh, Cantrell's in Fayetteville that weekend, and uh, then we went down the river, and it was an exciting, exciting trip. But uh, nevertheless, I've brought everybody from Kibo Cyrus all the way to I was involved with with Ti, so we can we can bring all kinds of different people. You know, it just depends on where and and when and how and all the details come together, then anything can happen. Well, well, if, if you want if you want to make this happen, I definitely you know I definitely have contact information for a lot of these people, and a lot of these people have already told me they're like you know. Justin, I would love to meet you. It's just a matter of getting there, you know. Well, here is an idea for you, Justin. And if, if you're if you're interested, I think the best way to do this mm-hmm. would be to do an eighties an eighties action movie Comic Con type thing. You know, you, you know how Comic Con they you know they bring in all the you know anybody from movies and and comics and, and all this stuff, and they sit around and they sign books and they sell merchandise and they do things like that. Mm-hmm. If you could get on the ball and find you about 20 to 25 people from the 80s that are willing to set up little stands, you could do an 80s action movie, um, like festival type type thing, where people come in to meet you know their favorite 80s action stars and come in to to talk about things and play games and all kinds of things and charge a cover and, and make some money. Oh, wow. Maybe, maybe that's something we could actually put together, Brian, you and me together. I mean, that's Well, I'll, I'll do everything I can for you. I always have. Oh, that that is true, ladies and gentlemen. That That is very true. I mean, Brian, Brian has always, has always come through for me and actually, um, as a matter of fact, um, when he heard when he heard of my brother's passing, he was the very first one to post online of you know my brother's passing when he passed last year. Right. So, so, so yeah, you, I may not talk to you all the time, Brian, but you you you've always you've always you know been there for me. So I always try to be at least. So. And uh, it's it's too bad that you never got to see me wrestle in the ring. I really wish I had that. Uh, I really wish I had that video. I always wondered how that went down and and how. And, and I mean, I, I want to see it. Uh, believe me, I, I think out of the top ten matches that I've never seen that I want to see, 
That has to be number one. If you ever find anyone who's got that on video, let me know. Oh, it, it's on my YouTube channel. I can watch it? <laughs> yeah. On your YouTube channel right now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I know what I'm doing after we get off this interview. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's been up there a long time. Man, you should have told me that. I've been asking you for it forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh I was going to tell you, too, Brian, um, you, you said Cyrus. I'm actually a fan of Gilderary Cyrus, and I've tried for years to get in contact with him. With Billy Ray Cyrus? Yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be hard to get in tr touch with him now. Did you hear he's on the rap charts? I didn't hear that, actually. Billy Ray Cyrus has, has came out with Achy Breaky Heart 2, and it's a rap song. And it has a rapper that I have – I can't remember right now. I, I can't remember what the rapper's name is. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's no one It's no one that we've ever heard of before, and he is rapping on Billy Ray Cyrus's Achy Breaky Heart 2, and it is actually on the rap charts. It actually is on the Billboard rap charts. Wow. Yeah, pretty pretty amazing stuff. He's, he's kind of talking the town right now, I'd say – Give it a month for him to fade back away, and you might actually be able to get in touch with him. Yeah, yeah. But probably yeah. not. With Miley's success, he's he's probably probably riding pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you know, because one year I uh, I joined his fan club, and I, like I didn't rejoin because I didn't get anything from his fan club like I was supposed to have. So, and this was like back in like two thousand. So. <laughs> Well, I, I've found that uh, anyone who is extremely rich mm -hmm. doesn't he, usually wants nothing to do with West Virginia, unless, of course, they are in the business of coal. <laughs> if they're in the business of coal and they've got millions of dollars, then they are very interested in West Virginia. They don't necessarily want to live here, but they'll definitely do business here. And celebrities, if they're extremely rich, chances are – they don't want to come here, and that and it's it's a sad reality, but it's true. I, I was trying to, uh, you know, on the on in other spots, you know, over on the West Coast, like for instance, the band Sublime. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with Sublime, oh, one yeah. of the most one of the most popular bands of all time. Well, they have a new rendition of Sublime called Sublime with Rome, and Rome is the uh, former lead singer of the Dirty Heads. And he is is a really awesome singer, really amazing singer, but he's still not original Sublime. And neither is – there's only like one or two original members in the band. Mm -hmm. They normally are doing shows like crazy on the West Coast. People are booking them for, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Over here, when we asked them to see if they would come to West Virginia, because I had a client that was interested in bringing them to West Virginia – and uh, we, we contacted him. Do you know what they sent me back, Justin? What? $125,000 is what they wanted. Holy shit. That is what they wanted. $125,000 for them to come to West Virginia. Now, they play all kinds of other places that there's no way they had the money to pay 125000 for them. But to come to our state... They won one hundred and twenty-five thousand wow. dollars. Same thing with uh, same thing with Miley Cyrus when when Miley Cyrus was doing the uh, the Hannah Montana thing, and mm -hmm. she wasn't doing the wild slut thing. She we actually had some uh, we had some some doctors in the area that were interested in bringing Miley Cyrus to the area, and I happened to know somebody who had a connect on her because, of course, I knew Kibo Cyrus, which Kibo Cyrus got me in, in contact with Miley's manager. So we call Miley's manager. She gives us a quote. Her quote is $100,000. Okay, these guys were cool with that. $100,000? We can do that. That's what they said anyway. I said, okay, well, I'll make the phone call back. We sat and waited on this call back, and they were supposed to call us back in 20 minutes, Ended up being like 45 minutes. We finally get a call back. She said, well, she can't do a million dollars, or she can't do a $100,000 anymore. Her prices went up. Mm -hmm. Well, we said, well, what's the new quote? She mm -hmm. said, a million dollars. 
a million oh. dollars for one night. That's the kind of money that Miley Cyrus is getting. That's insane. That that is very insane. If if I give her a million dollars for a concert, she better be doing a concert for a full freaking lifetime in West Virginia. If I give her a million dollars, I better be able to keep her like for a couple weeks, <laughs> at least, you know. But. That's uh, just an interesting thing that happened. I figured I'd share with you. Yeah. What what we could do is you could you could have her part of the week. We could do like a schedule and share custody over. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, uh, how was karaoke night the other night? Because I I noticed you posted on your Facebook that you was at karaoke night or something. Man, karaoke night is actually exploding. Two weeks ago, I started doing Applebee's karaoke, and this is the third time that I did it was last night. And the third time, we've actually filled up to the point where no one can even sit down. They're basically just standing around, hanging out, taking advantage of the specials and seeing karaoke. It's a great time. We've we've definitely became the hottest karaoke night in Beckley. Oh, awesome. I'll I'll definitely have to try to get out and – you know, yeah, man, you ought to come out and you can sing uh, that blood sports song. Oh, I've actually, I've actually got some, like, you know, I'm trying, like, I'm the biggest blood sports fan there is, but I'm actually I know. trying, I'm actually trying to break away from that and promote what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? It's time for me to shine, you know, right in the spotlight. You know what I'm saying? Well, of course, of course. But I have to say, your rendition of Fight for Survive. Fight to Survive was awesome. Oh yeah, me me and a friend of mine, uh, Chris Bailey, worked on that. Right. Yeah. He's actually. Uh, have you heard that uh, Chris Bailey is now the lead singer and guitar player for the band Core, and Core actually will start playing gigs very soon. Oh wow! They're actually going to be booked right around your neighborhood. Holy I'm crap. not sure the date. I wish I had the date in front of me. I don't have I don't have it in front of me, but Core will be at El Mariachi Mexican restaurant on I'm not sure I, I don't want to say a date because I don't want to be wrong. But if mm-hmm. you go to El Mariachi's Facebook page, it is clearly posted right there. Or you can go to the Core Facebook page. That's where I seen it today. They've mm-hmm. got a lot of acts coming to El Mariachi. Believe it or not, they've had uh, Taylor Made in there already. They've wow. got Col- they got Colton Pack, who was um, who was on The Voice, I believe. Mm-hmm. He was on The Voice, and um, Colton Pack will be performing at El Mariachi soon. Wade Wright and the Wrong Boys will be performing at El Mariachi soon. Uh, Cody Wickline and Krista Hughes will be performing at El Mariachi soon. But uh, mm-hmm. your your buddy Chris Bailey will be rocking out at El Mariachi with Core. Uh, very soon. I, like I'm thinking, like you want to check it as soon as this interview's over because you'll because it's very close to your house. You can make that event. Wow. Yeah, and I think they're playing. I think they're playing upstairs. But yeah. I'll I'll carry you upstairs. Now that that's a true friend right there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm I'm telling you. And, and one thing that you forgot to mention about the radio um, about the radio day. And, and and you helped me too, Brian. Um, I had to physically, and I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend this to any uh, like to anyone that has a disability, but I had to physically walk the stairs to get in the radio station. Yeah, and you did too. That that was pretty impressive. So, but I, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that to somebody with a disability because yeah. You know, I, I totally, I, I totally need to become more handicap accessible. You know, I got you climbing stairs at El Mariachi. I got you climbing stairs at the radio station. Man, I need to get more handicap accessible, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, you know, I wanted to work for that particular radio station, but do you know, you know, they're still not handicap accessible, Brian and. They told me that they were going to fix that in 2004. They're handicap, they're handicap accessible in a different kind of way. 
Yeah. But uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just keep carrying you, Justin. That's just what we're going to have to do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, like, maybe I can get, like, a, like a, a big backpack, and you can just, like, hop in the backpack, and I can just carry you around with me everywhere I go. <laughs> I'll, I'll be your uh, mini me. Yeah, that could be that could be great. That would be a great gimmick. We could book you know book the Justin Harvey and Brian Reznor experience, and you could you know be in that backpack, and mm-hmm. whenever it's your turn to talk into the mic, I could turn around. It'd be great. Oh, oh yeah, and, and and get the and get this, Brian. Like I called that particular radio station, and believe me, I still I still respect them, but you know. I tried to tell him what I've been doing about my little show and to see to see if I could get in for like interviews and and, and to even maybe you know possibly have a show played on the radio and they they plainly told me says sorry we can't we can't do that because if we te- if we tell people to listen to your show then they're not going to listen to ours so. So right. Can, well, yeah, yeah, they're 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 big with not promoting internet radio, and I'll tell you why. The reason why they don't want to promote your your show is because you are on the internet, and if mm-hmm. people go onto the internet, then there's no way in hell they're going to listen to our local radio, because there there's no way our local radio can even begin to compete with what's out there. To listen to. I mean, when you're when you're talking about, well, first of all, the biggest enemy ever is Pandora. Pandora is their biggest enemy ever because people are listening to Pandora all the time. And people are listening to Pandora in their cars. People who only have cassette decks in their cars can buy a $5 adapter and be listening to Pandora in their cars. That is the biggest threat to terrestrial radio in southern West Virginia. And the reason, I mean, it's a, really a threat to all radio all over the country, mm-hmm. but it's a major threat to terrestrial radio in southern West Virginia because terrestrial radio in southern West Virginia, let's just be honest, is not that good. That is the reason why people would rather, honestly, people would rather listen to Pandora with their phone's speaker then listen to the radio stations that we had to choose from in southern West Virginia through their system in their car. And that is true. And I, and anyone that says it isn't true is lying to themselves because when, what it comes down to is the level of performance that has to happen for radio to succeed can't happen in southern West Virginia with the current way things are going. There would have to be something that made people turn the radio on. They can't, like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, people were listening to the radio all the time because they had to. It was a lot of people's only connection with anything. Well, they got lazy. In that time period, they got very lazy because it's like people are going to listen to regardless, no matter what, even if we suck. Even if we don't do anything right, even if we don't play the right music, even if we don't keep up with trends, even if we don't keep them connected to what they want to be connected to, they're still going to be here because they have to be. Mm -hmm. But that's not true anymore. That's a, it's a completely different world now to where people do not have to listen to the radio. Actually, people don't need to at all. So you have to create a need. You have to create something that they want to hear. And if you don't have something they want to hear, then they're not going to pay attention. TV had to do this a long time ago. TV decided a long time. Now, when when TV first started, you know, long, long time ago, when TV first got started, you know, you could put anything on TV because they're going to be watching it. There's only two channels. You know, they're, they're going to be watching it. It's the, only, it's the only game in town. But then TV evolved, and it was like, oh, now there's a lot of channels, and we have got to actually be entertaining for people to pay attention to us. And that is what radio doesn't understand in southern West Virginia. Terrestrial radio in southern West Virginia does not, doesn't understand that they have got to be entertaining and make people turn on the radio. 
to do that, they have to spend more money. But it's just a matter of time before all the advertisers realize that no one's listening. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? If all the advertisers are realize that no one's listening to the radio, what what happens? Mm-hmm. Yep. They stop spending money. And when they stop spending money, then radio stations go out of business. Then radio becomes a failure. Now, this might be five years away. This might be ten years away. But it is the future. If radio doesn't step out of its regular shell, stop selling advertising the way that it sells advertising, mm-hmm. and reinvent their product, they're not going to have a product. And that is the truth. And anybody who doesn't believe that is completely lying to themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that holds them back, Brian, to be honest, is I know that they have to be censored, you know, during a certain time of the day. But if I remember correctly, when I first met you at my high school, you said that they could actually uncensor it at, you know, like midnight. Well, that's true. They can. That, there's no censorship rules from midnight to 5 a.m. But censorship is not the problem. You know, when I was younger, I thought, you know, the, you know, the, the dirtier this radio is, the better. And in a lot of ways, that was true. In a lot of ways, the shock value got over big. And it's one of the reasons why I got over as a radio jock. But mm-hmm. – the shock era is over. People aren't interested in shock radio anymore. That died with Howard, Howard Stern's gimmick yeah. and who he was. You know, so shock is over. It's not about shock. It's not about censorship. It's about good, solid radio. It's about saying things that people want to hear. It's about being someone that people want to listen to. And it's about portraying a, a a thing that someone wants to be involved in. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's where that's where they're messing up. You could go on the radio for a 24-hour block and not say a single thing that would offend anyone FCC-wise and still create good, solid radio, good, solid stuff. I mean, there there's a lot of things that could be different about radio around here, but radio has never changed. It has never changed in 25 years. Radio hasn't changed in southern West Virginia. We just keep on doing the same thing and hoping it works better next year. Let's hope it works better next year. But it's just working less and less and less. And they don't realize, hey, we got to reinvent our business. They say, hey, this is the business. If it's not working, it's not working. If it is working, it is working. And it's not. Mm -hmm. So – Restructure the business. They don't think like that. No, just keep hammering the same old tired shit. That will get us somewhere, and it never does. So until they reinvent radio, until ra- until the market is reinvented, until you know, until there's a whole new category of shows to get behind, and there's a whole new list of promotions to get behind. And there's a list as long as your arm of reasons why you should turn on the radio. Until that happens, we're slowly going to see radio get unplugged from life support here mm-hmm. in Southern West Virginia. Mm-hmm. That that's why with my show, Brian, I try to get good quality guests. That celebrities, martial artists, movie actors, anybody anybody that I can reach out to. And get that's what I try to do to try to produce really that is good what it's all about content right there and that is what it's all about. I kind of went on a tangent there, but nevertheless the the answer to your question is they don't want to push people to internet radio because they really don't want them to go on the internet to get their radio because if they do, it'll just further along the inevitable well one thing I want to say, Brian is. Um, one thing is, one day they're going to regret, you know, not fixing up the place and not hiring me. And then one day, they may even come to me and say, can you hook me up with this person? I'm going to tell them exactly what they told me. They said, we can't do that. You're a competitor. So I'm going to turn around and say, I can't do that. You're a competitor. 
So. Well, you you get them, Justin. You so, get them. But uh, you know what? Yeah. People, you know, like I said, like I talked about in my in my tangent there. Um, you know, they're they're basically you, you, they've, they've got enough rope to hang mm-hmm. themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, so we don't even, we don't even have to worry about someone that didn't help us along because you know people like that they hang themselves. I mean, because Brian, honestly, I've got I've got hours of great content with all kinds of celebrities. I mean, wrestlers, actors. I mean, my show is booming right now. I mean, I'm you know, and I was like, you know. Can we like play, you know, a five minute clip or something? Or I know? would be willing to make a bet. I would be willing to bet that Justin Harvey has interviewed more people on air, more celebrities on air in the last two years than than all the radio stations in Southern West Virginia. Uh I'd say you're right on that one, Brian. I would say I am right, too. And you know what is sad about it? It's not because they can't. Because, believe me, when I was on the radio, I interviewed tons of people. I I mean, a lot of big celebrities. And, And it was because I cared enough to go and seek those people out, just like you. And the reason why you don't hear celebrity interviews on local radio is they don't care enough to do that. The, the, they're, they're busy um, interviewing fake local rappers and anything like that. They're, they're, they're not focused on anything that, would, that people would actually care about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, 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 think if, I think if they would take my approach with what I've been doing, then people would want to turn it on and, and, and listen. I mean, honestly, you know? Well, you're really a talk radio format. So mm-hmm. I would say that uh, talk radio is definitely a whole other market than uh, than the radio stations that you've dealt with before. And, you know, you don't really need to be on terrestrial radio to make it. Um, have you have you paid any attention to my posts about Bob Kincaid? Uh, actually, actually, no. Can you can you tell me? Bob a Kincaid. Bit? Bob Kincaid is a local broadcaster. He actually had worked. He had a show called the Bob Kincaid Show, or it was mm-hmm. called actually it was called Head On with Bob Kincaid, and it was on News Talk six twenty WWNR. Uh, um, yeah, I remember them. Yeah. Okay, well, mm-hmm. it was on it was on News Talk. It was a very popular show, lots of call-ins, and he is a very high energy liberal radio host. Well, mm-hmm. there was a time when Southern Communications decided they were going to restructure their inside to include no liberals. So that is when a lot of liberals left, mm-hmm. which means Bob Kincaid left. Mm-hmm. Well, when Bob Kincaid left, his following was so big that mm-hmm. a listener that he had actually invested money into him, and they created something known as the Head on Radio Network. Well, the Head on Radio Network is based out of um, – in the, the Fayette County area. Mm-hmm. Well, he has been on – he has been doing what you do. He is being out – he's been out here on a – you know, on an Internet radio station – for five to six years, maybe even more than that, um, pushing his objectives. Now, he has interviewed some of the biggest names in politics. He gets more listeners than probably anyone that's doing Internet radio right now. I mean, he's, looking, he's, he's, got, he's got over like 2,000 people logged in to listen to it live, which is unheard of locally unheard of locally, mm-hmm. not to mention how many people listen to it later on, like, you know, at, it, for recording and, and, and in that process. Mm-hmm. Well, now Bob Kincaid has built his name up to the point where MSNBC has brought him to New York. MSNBC has Bob Kincaid on their TV shows. He's been on four different times so far. He has also wrote two 900 word blogs 
for MSNBC.com, where he is now known as Bob Kincaid, head-on radio network broadcaster, and MSNBC contributor. Wow. Which is, is the definition of making it. That is, that is the definition of making it. Now, 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 let's go back in time to what I said in the beginning. In the beginning, I said Bob was on News Talk 620. Now, Bob's on MSNBC. Bob is being scouted by some of the biggest, biggest radio and television producers in the news business. Everybody wants a piece of Bob Kincaid. Now, this is the same guy that a local radio station said, yeah, you you want to do way too much. You've got way too many ideas, and you're way too loud. So we're just going to, you know, fire you and replace you with uh, something canned probably. Now, all the other people they kept, mm -hmm. none of them are doing anything. All the people they kept actually ended up losing their jobs later and don't even work in the radio business anymore. Bob Kincaid took his dream and, and did it out of his house for five years to get noticed by MSNBC. Oh, and, wow. that's what he, and that's what he had to do because he couldn't do what he wanted to do, which was do terrestrial radio. Terrestrial radio has a stronghold. It's a grip mm -hmm. on on what's going on. And what sucks is that grip that keeps talented people out of the building is a very untalented grip. Therefore, that untalented grip doesn't want to bring talent in, talent in because talent will, will, will cause an uproar. If this person is good, then they might take so-and-so's job. And if they're real good, then they might take so-and-so's job. And if they're real, real good, they might make the whole place look like shit because nobody's doing that level of broadcasting locally. No one's doing it. And if they were, then somebody would fire them to keep from getting out. It's sort of like the whole, oh, the boss is coming. Everybody look busy. <laughs> You know what I mean? It, it's exactly like that. It's nobody wants, nobody that's in that inner circle wants to bring anybody that might kick them out of their spot in the door. And the owners are too blind to see it. Mm. They don't pay attention. They just hope the damn thing's running and making money. Man, I hope they sell some ads. And they don't realize, you know, that slight bit loss of money you take every year? It's just mm. going to keep getting bigger. It's just going to keep getting bigger until the whole thing goes down. And that will be because owners didn't pay attention and managers kept talent out of the building to keep from losing their jobs. It's a cutthroat, cutthroat entertainment business around here because there's not that many entertaining people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's true. Well, well, well like I said, Brian, you know, I try to produce quality content, and I'm I'm so serious about this that I actually bought an application for my phone to where I can record by phone at any given time. If a star calls me and says, "Record me at three p or three a.m. in the morning," I'll be like, "Okay, you know, here we go. We're recording now." You know, and that's how serious I am because I want to turn this little show into a big commodity. Well, anything I can do to help you, buddy, you let me know. Hey, and I, I tell you what, we should do, Brian. I would like to, I would like to sit down with you and, like, you know how you get like a bunch of bands and stuff. Why don't yeah. we kind of work together, um, where I can like interview them and, you know, we'll work together and stuff with these, well, with these events. I will see what I can do, my man. So. I'm definitely gonna yeah. I'm definitely gonna try and set you up to uh meet you know who if you know what actually happens. Oh yeah, 'cause when when I saw when I saw that and heard about it, I like I like freaked. I could I could have I could have stood up out of my well, wheelchair and did backflips. Well I let's not that. talk about let's not talk about it because it's not for sure. So I don't wanna I don't wanna say anything that that pins me to this because it might not happen. I'm just going to be completely honest with you, and I'm not one that likes to tell lies. Earlier you said, 
I'm a truth spitter. That's what I do. I tell the truth, whether you want to hear it or whether you don't want to hear it. And the truth is, it's about 50-50 on that. But if it happens, it's going to be gigantic. Yeah, de- definitely. And it's just it's going to be awesome because it's funny that you mentioned that, Brian, because I actually, you know, I actually visited his um, website and um, I was going to write his website and um, it says, you know, interview requests and all this other stuff. But then it says, you know, give us a money amount. And then it says, you know, only serious money queries, you know, considered. And I was like, well, I don't have any uh, moolah, but, you know, maybe someday I'll get to meet him and, you know, take pictures or do something. Well, hopefully I can make it happen. So. so, But I'll make no promises. Yeah. Because like I said, Brian, I think we should really work together you know, promotionally now, because no, nothing can stop us, brother. Nothing can, nothing can censor us now. Because um, when we was on that particular radio station, we really had to, we really had to watch what we said, what we did, and now it's now it's freelance. So. Right. So. So, and um, <laughs> if you don't, if you don't mind, like. Can, can you tell me? Can I mean, if not, it's fine. Um, but can you tell me? Can you tell me the reason you left, or the reason I left the radio station? Yeah. Um, because to basically to pursue other things. I mean, uh, the radio station took up a ridiculous amount of my time, and it was a uh, it was a ridiculous amount of my time for not a ridiculous amount of money. And um, I was always treated like the uh, like the redheaded stepchild or something, and I, I really I really didn't dig that. You know what I mean? Especially once I got to the point where I was more popular than anyone in the building, and I was, you know, I was the one bringing in money, and I was the one that was you know making deals, and I'm I, I've got a got a lot of stuff behind me, and they're still treating me like the redheaded stepchild, and. I just decided that I'd be better off to go out on my own and do my own thing. Yeah, because and and I'm sure they I'm sure they got tired of us talking on air, but that to me to me I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world because we had some um, we had some great air time together because um, I talked about DMX becoming a preacher. I talked about. Um, which she's my ex girlfriend now. I talked about my ex girlfriend's mother getting in a fight at my graduation. I mean, classic moments. Classic moments. <laughs> so so yeah, we we uh we definitely um we definitely had a blast, didn't we, Brian? So and, and not okay. only that, um people don't realize that I was actually in a band and I played I played um and sang a few shows and worked with you for some of your shows. Right? That was when you were with uh, Seraph, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we we had a blast. So, for sure. So, but um anyway, Ryan, um do you have um do you have any um uh final thoughts for my audience and uh you know, um you know, I hope you've enjoyed this interview. You know, because I kind of, I kind of feel weird because the last interview we did, you was, you was interviewing me. So the tables have turned, my friend. The tables have turned. <laughs> yep, um, I 100 percent enjoyed it. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of your show. I've been listening for a while, so it feels great to be uh, to be actually a part of it, and. Um, you know, I, I, it's great to talk to you, Justin. Anytime that uh, you got a second, give give me a yell, man. I'd, I'd love to talk to you more. Oh, absolutely, Brian. And that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Who is your dead day? Brian Rister, old school classic. Yo, this is-
this is Justin from Shady High School, the band announcer. You're listening to the master of thugonomics, Brian Reznor, on today's hit music, 103 CIR. Brian Reznor. Brian Reznor. On today, today's hit music, 103 CIR. If your makeup is at an all-time low, take it to the top with Mary Norman's Ring Color Collection. Colorific. It'll rock your world with bold, bright color products to give your beauty routine a little jolt. Fresh new colorific shades and a free gift available at Mary Norman Crossroads Mall, Beckley. That's right, Justin. And right now at Merle Norman, get retired Vera Bradley 20% off. Also the original Italian charm bracelet, Zappini and Crabtree and Evelyn. All available at Merle Norman at the Crossroads Mall. Off the heat. Brian.